What is going on my broskies? My name is Totsky back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Now again, we're talking about some more Japan news. So I made a video yesterday about it, talking about the new VV, uh, all the new treasure map characters coming out. Uh, there was a brand new Straw Hat Sugo Fest announced, the actual Straw Hat crew member unit. So there's a bunch of those characters coming out. However, there was additional news that gave us information relating to limit break expansions for new characters on JP. Now, this is interesting because... Um, well, this actually kind of falls in line with the rest of the stuff that we just got. So on JP, uh, there was actually a, a down, data download um, the other day, which showed... Uh, I don't know if it's going to show it. It might not show it here on the news post, but... Um, yeah, I can't see it here, but basically what's happening is, is all of the movie content is returning, right? So we're getting the, the Bullet Skull Island is returning, and then when it returns, it will be in the unlockable missions on JP, mind you. This is all JP information. Um, then there's also this event here. Um, the fact that One Piece Stampede is getting, you know, the, the release on DVD and Blu-ray, and you can go ahead and purchase that, which is awesome. And because of that, that's the reason why they're bringing back all of this movie content. So I think that's great. It's a great celebration of film stampede because it, it definitely is like one of the better one piece films for sure now with that they actually introduced a bunch of limit break expansions for movie characters now kind of weird though starting off we're going to go from the bottom and go to the top because some of these expansions are just insane so the treasure map units that are getting limit break expansions smoker makes a lot of sense because he is the movie character and then you've got nl uh, i don't know why nl is getting one but he does get minus two cooldown what does he start off initially is he's 15 turns isn't he nl uh Psy. He's 15 turns, I believe. Yeah, 15 turns. So that going down to 13 is very, very good. Uh, and I also want to check out Smoker. I don't remember what his cooldown was specifically. His cooldown is 14. So he goes down to 12 turns. That's hella good for Smoker. Hella good. What else does he get? He also gets 200 attack, 350 HP. Uh, that ain't bad. That actually ain't bad. So Smoker looking pretty good right now. I don't think that's a terrible idea to go ahead and use that. Remember, treasure map keys are a lot easier to get a hold of compared to the Sugo Fest exclusive keys. So, you know, spending them on treasure map units, you, you can do what you want with that. But anyways, let's go through the brand new rare recruits that are getting limit break expansion, which do include some legends. So Stampede Frankie's getting one. Minus two cooldown for him is not bad. He is a... He's a type booster, I believe, for Psy and Dex. So that's pretty good. E extra stats are always nice. Stampede Nami. Now, everyone knows Stampede Nami is really good. She has the ability to remove Special Bind. I think she removes... She removes something else. I don't remember. But I know she's a cooldown reducer for Psy and, in uh, Psy and Dex as well. Uh, but she also gets a third potential ability. Now, for those of you who don't know on Global... Uh, some rare recruits, when they do get limit break expansions, get a third ability. So now rare recruits have a potential to get more abilities, which is cool. Now she gets the ability of Sailor Despair Resistance. Now this is obviously a new mechanic. Not too many people know about this, but there is a new debuff in the game that will, you know, how when you're when you get your captains despaired and they get that certain icon. That can happen to your crew members, and if that happens, it means that their Sailor abilities are, like, locked out. Now, for Nami, that would be really bad, because she has a Sailor ability that will resist Special Bind on herself, so then you can use her Special to unbind your other characters. So now you have this, you can potentially resist some turns of that, which is great. Next is Zoro. So Zoro gets minus two cooldown and some stats. Brooke also minus two cooldown and some stats. Robin gets some stats minus one cooldown, and she does get the Sailor Despair resistance as well. I don't know exactly what her Sailor abilities are, so I don't know like how useful that is. And I'm not really too sure if Sailor Despair resistance only works for that one unit, or does it work for the whole team? I'm pretty sure it works for the whole team. I'm not really 100% sure how it's actually calculated. But Robin, is she quick or is she int? I can't remember. I think she's int. Yep, yeah, so she gets... Uh, makes tandem and recovery orbs beneficial for strength, quick, and int. Wow, okay. So if you get your Sailor Despaired, that will be turned off. So you definitely don't want that to be turned off. That's actually a really, really good ability. I had no idea she had that. So that's really good. Um, yeah, so you definitely want to resist that. Stampede Chopper also will go ahead and uh, have the Sailor Despair resistance. Uh, he doesn't get any cooldown, though, which is a little unfortunate. So let's go ahead and check out Chopper. Chopper. And what does he have for a sailor? Reduces silence on himself, a special bind by three turns. Yep, so you definitely want that for sure. Now, also, moving on from Stampede units, we have the film Strong World units. So we've got Indigo and Scarlet. So Scarlet gets Ship Despair Resistance, which is, again, a brand new limit break ability that came out not too long ago, where obviously, as the title would suggest, it will resist turns of Ship Despair. Now, Ship Despair is not a very common thing in the game, and only very select dungeons actually have that. 
So I don't know how useful this will be. Potentially, this is for the upcoming game mode that will be coming with 10.0 around the time of the 6th anniversary of Treasure Cruise Japan. That's what I expect to happen here. But Scarlet does get minus 5 cooldown, which is kind of crazy. Um, Scarlet, let's go ahead and have a look at Scarlet. Minus 5 cooldown is kind of nuts. So she goes down to he or she. I don't know if Scarlet's a he or she. Scarlet is a female name, I assume. But either way, um, 8 turn cooldown for... Some utility. Uh, if you're below 10%, you get a two times orb boost. Like it's it's not a very good not a very good special, but look, it's it's still pretty cool at the end of the day. Um, then you've got Indigo who gets minus two cooldown, also gets Sailor Despair resistance as well. Indigo is not a very useful character either. So let's move up here. Now we got the film Gold stuff. So we've got Barkerite who also gets Ship Despair resistance and minus two cooldown. She's actually really good. She has attack down and removal. She removes chain lock as well. Um, she is an orb booster. Like she's just a really good unit overall. So minus two cooldown for her is very good. Some stats are nice. So Barkerite looking pretty nice here. Tanaka is interesting, so he gets minus two cooldown. I believe he was like a unit that removed like blue shield and rainbow shield or something. Let me have a look again. Um, Tanaka. Uh, I don't remember too much about this guy. Tanaka gets, yeah, 40 times attack in tightless damage, which is cool. Um, he gets, uh, removes enemies attack up, increased defense, and enrage by three turns. So yeah, attack up, blue shield, and enrage. If the captain is dex or quick, he gets himself a matching orb, and you get additional tightless bonus damage for one turn so nothing special but the interesting thing here is is he does get double special activation with his limit break expansion which is interesting i don't know if that's going to make him more useful i mean if you do end up using him yes it will obviously make him more useful but like i don't think it's he's still not that great like he's, he's not an amazing character overall there's just so many better characters now that you can use to do what he does but but better you know what i mean so tanaka is not very interesting so we've also got Strength Dice. Dice is a, a really cool rare recruit. He's definitely one of my favorite rare recruits in the game. He's very cool. Minus one cooldown is great. And Ship Despair Resistance. Again, not very common, but we shall see how that progresses in the future. Very, very interesting. Minus two, uh, plus 200 attack is very, very good. So now let's get to the more interesting stuff, which is the main reason why I wanted to make this video, which is a Limit Break expansion for some Sugo Fest exclusive characters. So next we have Stampede Luffy. Now I definitely need to go ahead and peep uh, Stampede Luffy's abilities. I don't remember exactly what he's all about. Uh, let me just type in Luffy and Sai, and here he is. So Stampede Luffy, looking like a snack. So he uh, will go ahead and get 200 additional HP and attack, and plus 100 recovery, minus one cooldown. So his stats overall are going to be very, very good. So he's going to be 2,248. Uh, he's going to have a lot of HP, and minus one cooldown. So down to nine turns. Are you kidding? Yeah, that's not including his, his key limit break yet. So nine turn cooldown is nuts. That is so, so good. I know a lot of people really don't like his special ability, and I understand why people don't like it, but you got to remember that as a captain, plus his special, dude, he just hits so freaking hard. I don't know how people don't see this, man. Um, yes, it could have been a lot better, but it's still very, very powerful special ability. 2.5 attack and orbs, and stat boosting as well. Like, Stampede Luffy is looking very good right now. Uh, so, the next one is Bullet. Now, Bullet... <laughs> Now, one thing that they didn't need to do to Bullet is give him additional attack, and they definitely gave him some additional attack. Now, it is a little bit less than a lot of the other characters here. You can see 200 attack is about the stock standard that you get from Limit Break Expansion. Now, I think that they only gave him 150 because prior to this, he was the second highest, I think. I think the new Arlong Legend that came out had the most attack in the game. Uh, can we actually filter by attack? Filter by attack. Um, ooh, no, because we're under Luffy. So Douglas Ball's there right now. I think Arlong should be here. But anyways, let's go ahead and have a look at Bullet. So with Bullet, his stats right here, 2019. With Cotton Candy, that's 2,219. And because my math sucks right now, 2,219 plus an additional 150. 2,369 attack is insane, dude. That is nuts. That, like, oh my god. <laughs> they definitely did not need to do that. Plus he gets 450 HP. Are you kidding me? Like, he already was nearly at 6,000, right? Uh, how much is that? Was it was uh, 5,953. Plus 450. 6,403 HP. Wow. And remember, he does boost HP with his captain ability, so more HP is always worth it, right? And he gets a lot more HP compared to a lot of regular characters. You can see 200 for Stampede Luffy. A lot of these other characters, 200, 350. He gets 450. And the minus one cooldown. So what does he go down to now? Uh, 14 turns? 
Yeah, dude. Uh, Douglas Bullet, I think that when that key limit break comes out, I'm definitely going to be doing that. That is insane, right? But here we get to the more fun stuff. Okay, so Legend Zephyr is getting a expansion to his limit break. 350 HP, 200 attack, 75 recovery, minus three cooldown. Hold up. Hold up. I actually do need to pull these characters up because I don't remember exactly what their old captain abilities were like. But Zephyr, um, minus three cooldowns. So he goes down to nine turns. Wow, that's great. That's so good. So what does he get in terms of his captain ability upgrade, which is huge. A lot of people were hoping that they were going to get super evolutions. I personally hoped that we we're going to get like uh, some sort of event in the future where all the movie legends at once will all get a super evolution. That would be so good. But anyways, uh... He has a buffed captain ability. So he's going to go ahead and boost the attack of shooters by four times if they have a matching slot, 3.5 otherwise, and reduce damage received by 10%. Doesn't mention the six shooter conditions for the upgraded captain ability. So that is actually a pretty big difference. So his old captain ability where you need to have six shooters, so that looks to be gone. He would be a 3.9 times attack if you have a beneficial slot, 3.25 otherwise, and still have the 10% damage reduction. So this goes up to four times, and this goes up to 3.5 times. Uh, overall, I do think it's a great upgrade. Uh, shooters, as we know right now, are not one of the better classes in the game, arguably the worst class in the game. So, look, I don't think Zephyr is worth the key limit break right now, but if he's like the only good shooter captain you have, and you need to run a shooter captain for something, then it's not a terrible idea to use your key for, he for this character, especially because not only does he get the additional stats, which uh, are going to add to his special ability of tap timing bonus damage, because the stats will add to that, but the minus three cooldown is humongous as well. He looks good. He looks like a better version of the old Zephyr. And remember, he does have room for a super evolution in the future, which could definitely change things up. So hopefully that does happen eventually. Uh, the next character is Shiki. Now, with Shiki getting a upgraded captain ability as well, that will be interesting. We'll go ahead and pull him up real quick because I do need to compare and contrast these two. So Shiki... Um, Shiki, the legendary pirate, gets minus three cooldown as well. So he goes down to a nine turn cooldown, and that's great. That actually makes him like way, way, way more usable, especially if you like to use jack teams for Fortnite dungeons and stuff. So that's cool. So he gets 500 HP, which is huge, 200 attack, 50 recovery. So captain ability goes, will boost the attack of quick dex and int by 3.25. 1.5 health boost, and then boost their attack by four times after a chain of dex, int, and quick, with attacks no lower than good, and makes tandem and recovery beneficial for all characters. What is different here? So the old version is a 2.75 at the start, and this guy is now 3.25, so that is a little bit of an upgrade there. Uh, still four times after you attack in the right order, and boost HP by 1.35. Oh, okay, so they made, him, they made his HP boost way bigger. That is actually a big deal. This is a huge deal, actually, because this means that his special damage will do absurd amounts more compared to what it previously did if he was the captain. So, okay, I actually kind of like what they did here. I, when I first read this, I was a little bit, you know, I, I, I didn't know what to think, really. I didn't think it was that impressive. But now realizing that the HP boost got buffed is pretty big. Now, this obviously didn't change because that's the high cap, but that base multiply going to 3.25... That, that is actually pretty good. Um, so Shiki looks not too bad. Now, obviously, that does still have some room for a super evolution in the future, and hopefully that does happen. But the final character that we have to talk about, which is just nuts, is Tezoro. So Tezoro legitimately becomes, like, a usable captain now. So before, we already know how, how Tezoro was, and the main reason why no one was using him as a captain is because of how difficult it was to build a team with him. Because previously, you needed to have one of every class in the game on your team, and that's very difficult to fulfill with five characters uh to, to fulfill eight different classes and on top of that to, you know the type of teams you could build were just not very cohesive and the fact that you know just everything here didn't look that great as a kit like it was fine when he first came out but it didn't take long for him to be really just unusable basically but now he gets a huge upgrade so the stat upgrade is good the cooldown was unnecessary but people will take that we'll take that additional cooldown uh his special is still very good by the way goes down now to an eight turn cooldown so his captain ability boosts the attack of all characters by 3.75 1.35 hp boost boost the chances of matching slots boost the attack of all characters by 4.75 after four greats in a row and will reduce your attack boost each time you hit a perfect so okay 
the immediate thing you can see here, he no longer needs one of every class in the game to be used as a captain. So that is a huge upgrade. That's legitimately the only thing that people were asking for about Tazora. Like if you were to remove one thing about Tazora or change one thing about Tazora to make him usable, it was definitely the condition of having to have one of every class. So now he's a rainbow captain, 3.75 and a 1.3 HP boost. Did he boost HP before? Yeah, okay, he still he boosted HP before, but look here, right? So this did not change. However, the max cap is now changed. Previously, it was 4.5. Now, it is 4.75, right? Yeah, 4.75 after you hit four greats in a row. And of course, that, that's one of the things about Tezora and how he works with his special is the fact that if you're hitting greats continuously, uh, your chain multiplier gets hindered significantly because of that. So with his special ability, that chain lock is obviously very important with the way that he works. Uh, he also gives you matching slots with the special as well. Like, dude, this is literally a usable captain ability now. He gets 200 additional attack as well, so he goes up to 21, 28, which is great. Dude, like, Tesoro, man, looking like a beast now. Looking so, so cool. I can't wait till this comes to global. I hope that we get this fast track to global, dude, because this is so cool. I mean, global still doesn't even have the support abilities for these characters yet. Man, um, but Tezora looks very impressive, massive fan of what they've done here. He is basically a usable unit now, which is great to see. Additional stats, cooldowns of all these characters, I'm a big fan. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of breaking down all of these Limit Break expansions. Shout out to Blazing Gamer for these translations, of course. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and if you guys did, make sure to leave a like, and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.